This week's On the Shelf is with an author whose writing journey began when she self-published a memoir about a summer spent working at Disney World in Florida. Fast forward nine years and she's a rising star of the Irish crime fiction scene. She's published three thrillers, including her latest, Rewind, which is about a murder that's caught on a hidden camera at secluded holiday cottages in Ireland. She's been nominated for loads of prizes, including the prestigious Edgar Award. She is originally from Cork. She now lives centrally in Dublin, near the Grand Canal, which had a role to play in her second book, The Liar's Girl. We're going to go and meet her and have a snoop at her bookshelves. Catherine Ryan Howard, thank you very much for letting us come into your home. You're very welcome. Uh, where are we? Is this, are we in your library? Are we in your writing room? This is where you write, is it? This is uh, where the crying happens. <laughs> yep. I spend most of my time sitting at this desk, so I wanted to have something to look at that wasn't just a blank wall. So we have a lot of things here that just make me smile or just remind me to keep going or just look pretty. Do you actually, like, there's some sort of inspirational sayings, do you actually, when you get caught in something, look up and go, write more, okay, I'm going to write more? Um, yeah, I mean, most of the time I just make another cup of coffee or something, but it's nice to have these things here. And some of them are cards that were given to me by friends or, you know, I have, like, my little dagger certificate, so when things are really bad, I can look at that and think, look, you did this at least once before, you can do it again. Okay, so tell us, what's the first book that you've picked to talk about? As a surprise to no one who knows me, the first book is Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton, which is my favourite novel of all time. And for most of us, uh, we would know it, and by we I mean I, <laughs> as a film rather than a novel. I'm um, trying not to like strangle you right yeah, now, I won't okay, hold that against okay, okay, okay. you. <laughs> but did you read the book before you saw the film, or did the film bring you I to the did. book? I did, so the film came out in the summer of 1993, I was 11, I couldn't wait for it to come out I was reading like all the magazine articles about it and stuff so to help with my waiting I convinced my mom to buy me the movie tie-in paperback which Ooh. is still here in 1993 have, have you laminated that I had to put plastic around it because it was absolutely falling okay. to pieces um, but I was 11 so I couldn't read or couldn't understand all the stuff about chaos theory and genetics and all that but I did get to the bit about the dinosaurs I've reread it every year since I just think it is the most fantastic adventure and when I read it I thought you know someone sat down and just made this up and if that's a job I want to have it so I think that was one of the first times I read a book where I felt like I want to write books for a living so so I mean it's hard to say these things for definite but do you think when you were 11 you knew you wanted to be an author absolutely there's a photo on the desk here of me seven and a half years old with my typewriter on Christmas morning. I think I always wanted to be a writer as soon as I knew that writers existed, that books didn't just like apparate out of yeah. nowhere. So it's something I've always, always wanted to do. But I think when I read Jurassic Park, I thought, you know, I definitely want to do it. And you know, but like Jurassic Park is science fiction? Is it's a it tense thriller, I think we would say. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but, oh right, so you, okay, so some people would see it as science fiction, but you see it as a thriller, which is interesting because you write thrillers, but I wouldn't think Jurassic Park and the books you write are necessarily in a similar genre. I, I wouldn't put them in the same genre myself, but I think in terms of that just pace that keeps you turning the pages, and sometimes you're holding your breath, um, you know, there's a lot of things that are in the movie that are in the book, but there's so much more in the book. There's amazing set pieces. And I just, when I sit down to read it, I've read it so many times and I still just love it. And I just would love readers to feel that way about my books. <laughs> and did, okay, so that was when you were 11 and you're reading. Did you keep reading then? I mean, did you, like some people go through a period in their teens where they stop or they don't like books anymore? Or? Oh no, I never, I never suffered from that affliction. Okay, okay. <laughs> So what else have you got? Like I see, what else? Elizabeth Haynes? Yeah, so that's Into the Darkest Corner by Elizabeth Haynes. Um, I figured since I'm a crime writer, I know I don't look like one, pink desk polka dots, but I figured I should have a crime novel on my list and this is one of my favourites. I think it's such a fantastic book. 
It doesn't rely on any gimmicks. There's no big twist. There's no kind of hooky concept thing. It's just an incredibly well-told story. And when people ask me, you know, what's your favorite psychological thriller? That's a term we throw around so much. And I think a lot of the time the books we use, mm. the books we apply it to perhaps don't deserve it. This is a book that will have you double checking. Your doors are locked. You know, that you're safe in your home. It's it's frightening. It's a frightening book. When and I can't recommend it enough. <laughs> when, did you, when did you read it? It came out in 2011, so that would be a much more recent read. But that was before I had even written a crime novel myself. For a long time, I was writing women's commercial fiction. I was trying to be funny. I was basically writing, quite cynically, what I thought would get me published. I think I thought I was too young to write crime or I, I had this thing in my head that you needed like a contact in the FBI to write about serial killers and stuff. Just loads of excuses basically. And when I sat down and finally wrote the book that would become Distress Signals, it was like an audible click, like everything just fit into place. So perhaps Into the Darkest Corner inspired that something. somewhat. Because before, so that was 2011, and, um, so it was 2010 you published Mousetrapped, yes. you're self-published. Yeah. What is Mousetrapped about? So Mousetrapped is about the year and a half I spent working in Walt Disney World in Florida. I always follow that up by saying I was not dressed as any kind of character or rodent. Um, I was a front desk agent in a Disney hotel and it was a great adventure, but it didn't turn out exactly the way I thought. So I started writing about it and that book eventually became Mousetrapped. It's completely different. That was like it memoir. It couldn't be more different. Yeah. <laughs> and like, was it, did it feel like a big move to switch from writing kind of travel memoir to saying, no, I'm now a crime writer and I'm going to write that? Not really, because for me, the nonfiction was always a means to an end. Like it, I knew it wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. It was just what I was doing now. Um, and I always said it kept me in the coffee and ink cartridges. I needed to actually write the novel that I always wanted to write. So I think the books I self-published like Mousetrapped are very much just like me. They're like how I talk and how I would tell the story to my friends. Whereas crime is the part of me that I think scares the people like, no, it's quite dark and creepy. And it's because that's what I love to read. OK, so. um, but what's kind of interesting is that Into the Darkest Corner is the only crime novel there. Um, but yeah. there is like a science feel generally. Yeah. To, so <laughs> tell me about something else you have. Picked. So The Hot Zone by Richard Preston. I read that when I was 13. It's basically about the Ebola virus, which anyone who's seen Outbreak or Contagion or news reports recently will know is a terribly infectious, um, you know, killer disease. I read this book and before I got to the end, I decided that was it. Forget the writing. I was going to be a virologist. And until the a day... Virologist? A virologist? Which is one of those viruses. Yes. Okay, right, but right. I was very, very specific. I wanted to study Ebola in deep breath, the United States Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases in Fort Detrick in Maryland, despite the fact that I'm Irish, squeamish and have no aptitude for science. And that dream lasted until the day of the biology leaving cert, when reality was like, Catherine, get off this. That's a long time though, <laughs> that's like four years. It's six years, it was, my, it was okay, my entire right, right, right. secondary school career. Like I told every career guidance counsellor, I went on a sort of women in science thing in CIT in Cork, every English essay I twisted so I could make it a story about Ebola, which is not easy to do, yeah, but yeah. I did it. Um, yeah, I was absolutely obsessed. And I think there's a part of me that, despite the fact that I couldn't be more ill-suited for that job, there's a little part of me that would still like to be in the CDC in a big blue suit. So even though you were <laughs> thinking as a kid and as a teenager that you wanted to write, you also had this interest in, yeah. in science or really specifically in viruses. Very. Like. I mean, I didn't even like microbiology. Okay. It was just <laughs> the viruses. And that was why we uh, failed, basically, the biology leaving cert. But when I read this book, uh, I just thought, OK, I'm going to write in the weekends because I have to be a virologist. I have to do this. <laughs> virologist by day, <laughs> novelist by night. Uh, and did you study? What did you study after school? So uh, this is where uh, reality comes knocking because I went to study a combined science degree in Lancaster University in the north of England. And I lasted three weeks, one of which was fresher. So technically it was two weeks. <laughs> And then I got out of there because I was like, I enjoy the hot zone as in reading the book, yeah. but I'm not, I'm not suitable to 
to work in that capacity. So, so, you, so you dropped out? Like I dropped out. Broke two, my dad's heart. Two weeks into it? Three. 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 Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but like, would you have not given it the semester? No, no like I, I knew. I mean, it was, I blamed the book because it totally is at fault not just me. I just knew, I knew it wasn't what I was supposed to have done. And I just felt if I stayed, I would be wasting money, it would be wasting time. And I just didn't want to be there. So I got it. And what did you do then? Did you come back to Cork? Not or? much. <laughs> I came back to Cork. I worked in a series of office jobs for a few years. And then I decided I was going to go and have an adventure. And I applied to be a campsite courier in France. And they ended up giving me a better job in the Netherlands. And from there, I went to Disney World. And then I wrote Mousetrapped and it went on from there. So, okay, so sort of it all connected. Like science not working out ultimately led to you writing. I mean, I really believe that, you know, you can take out any of these things that I did, even if at the time they were mistakes. Yeah. Because the chain of events leads right here today, which I wouldn't change. Um, And when you went to start writing crime, you, you didn't like none of these life experiences seem to have played into it I don't see a science element to your books or I don't see the holiday camp world you so were you writing completely from your imagination when you were starting because you were your first book Distress Signals is set in a cruise ship yeah I mean you might see the holiday camp thriller yet you know I, I usually end up finding ways to work in everything I have into the into the fiction. With Distress Signals, I used the fact that I'd worked in housekeeping in Disney World okay. because the character on the cruise ship works in housekeeping on the ship and I hadn't done that. I'd never actually been on a cruise ship, still haven't and definitely won't be going after <gasps> <laughs> after the research. But um, I just used it so I kind of find ways to repurpose all that stuff. But there might be a tech thriller in me yet. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. If I run out of serial killer ideas they might have to bring back a virus your last book <laughs> rewind which um is, is set in these holiday cottages and there's this murder caught on camera but had you any experience of this or what did, did you draw from your own life at all for that hopefully i have not had any experience of it. if <laughs> of there's murder, video okay. on the internet somewhere i'm unaware that is because um after i self-published my books and i decided okay I'm going to write the novel now. I'm going to do the thing that I've been saying I'm going to do for years and years. I booked myself into a holiday cottage in Shanagarry Mm. in East Cork in November. I don't drive. It was like 40 minutes walk from the beach. It was totally isolated. And the cottage was actually a new build and it had these huge windows like floor to ceiling. And even in the daytime, I would say to myself, if I looked up and there was a man standing outside the window like threatening me what could I do like even though it's the daytime I'm still in danger and I filed that away and that ended up meeting another idea that I got from a post secret image so post secret is this project online where people write their deepest darkest secrets and give them to this guy who puts it on the internet and the secret said I trade hidden sex cam footage with other Airbnb hosts and at that moment I'm sorry were you on this site looking for stories or I was just scrolling on Instagram kicks? procrastinating okay, <laughs> as ever mm. um, so that idea then met the house from years ago and that's where Rewind came from okay very good okay next there's two books left so okay we'll do which, Sally okay Sally Ride by Lynn Sure, which I have never heard of so Sally Ride was the first American woman in space Um, And I picked her because I'm an absolute Apollo space shuttle nut. When I lived in Florida, I was a very proud owner of a Kennedy Space Center annual pass and I would drive out there like every other weekend. I just loved it. I loved it because of a movie called Space Camp, which is a factually, outrageously terrible kids movie from the 80s starring an 11 year old Joaquin Phoenix fun Mm -hmm. fact okay um which is a completely implausible story about kids who go to space camp and end up on the space shuttle but I had the VHS of this worn out I just watched it over and over and my biggest dream was to see a space shuttle launch which I finally did when I was in Florida so I picked this book I could have picked one of two dozen space books but I picked Sally Ride because she's a woman the book is by a woman that's quite unusual in the Mm. library of astronaut biographies and also because Sally was one of the first astronauts who didn't come from like a military or air force background 
those men, and they were all men, they just wanted to fly the thing that was fastest, that went the furthest. They didn't mm -hmm. really care that they were going to space. Whereas Sally was like, space is a fantastic adventure and we should go there. And this biography is written by a woman who knew her well. So it's just a fantastic book that spans the entire life really of the space shuttle because she was involved in the Challenger and uh, Columbia Committee investigations. So if you were starting with a space book, and I wish everyone would read one, I would go with Sally Ride. And sure. a lot of the books you've picked, they seem to have film connections in some way or similar. Um, similar kind of films. Are you as into movies as you are books? Or? Absolutely. I just started a screenwriting course this summer because ah. I don't have enough to do. So. Yeah. And to <laughs> write that's an just original. To write an original. Would that be your plan, or to adapt I mean, something? That would be my ultimate plan at the moment. I'm adapting one of my own books because I think that's the best way to learn how to do this. Okay. Um, I think there's too many novelists who think they can write screenplays because they can write novels. Yeah. Um, I fully acknowledge that it's an entirely different thing altogether so I'm learning but that's just something for fun like novels are really where my the focus at. yeah okay. okay and the last book then is uh, Beautiful Runes Jesse Walter so this is Jurassic Park is my favorite novel probably that I read as a child Beautiful Runes is my favorite novel that I read as an adult it is wonderful it is the most beautiful warm funny heartbreaking book I recommend it to everyone. If you haven't read it yet, I hate you because I'm so jealous you get to experience it for the first time. This is how I feel with people that haven't read Harry <laughs> Potter. I'm always like, oh yeah, you still have all you this have it all ahead of you. Yeah. yeah. So I bought Beautiful Runes purely because of the cover. It has a beautiful um, image, the uh, Italian coast on it. And I took it to Nice where I had started to go in the autumn to write. There wasn't a lot of writing going on. Okay. There was a lot of reading on the beach and cafeing and stuff going on. Um, and I just remember reading the book. I remember sitting on the beach, having this amazing experience, the sun setting, my little glass of rosé or whatever it was. And it's just a fantastic, fantastic book. And I think when I started writing, you know, I was never aiming for awards or, you know, recognition. What I wanted was to give someone that last hour on the couch or on a plane or on a beach. And for me, Beautiful Rings is the novel that you know it, it just takes you away and I think that's what I'm always aiming for when I write is escape of course I write crime so some people are trying to legitimately escape yeah. in the books but I just love it I just recommend it to everyone it's a beautiful beautiful book do you take when you read books uh, even when they're not crime are you taking things from them like the style of writing or I don't know how people draw characters like now that you write, do you read in a different way? I guess. Completely. And I think that's actually one of the downsides of writing books mm. is that you lose the ability. It, it really takes a very special book now for me to stop looking at the mechanics. And especially with crime novels, I know there's only so many ways this can go. I can see what the author is doing. So in some ways, it's ruined reading a little bit. Of course, I still do it. Of course, I still find books that I love. But I think as a writer, you're absolutely looking to see how things have been put together. And of course, you're learning from that. I mean, yeah. if you read a book and something really doesn't work, you know, you you know not to do that. But I do wonder about that, especially in crime writing, because it's so popular at the moment and there's so many um, crime novels, thriller novels. Like, how do you keep it original? Because there's only so many ways to bury a corpse. I know, and <laughs> that is something I worry about that I will run out of ways to bury a corpse. Um, when I sit down to write, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to write the book that I want to read. And right now, what I want to read is a novel that is absolutely a crime novel or a thriller, is recognisably so, but is something I've never read before. Mm. So there's something about it, whether it's the way the story is told or the structure or the twist, that completely surprises me. That's what I'm aiming for. And so, for instance, with Rewind, you know, all the elements are quite recognisably crime. They've probably been done before. I think everything has. But I wanted to add something that made it different, that made it fresh for readers. And that's the structure. So Rewind is told out of order. It's supposed to be a tape that you start watching in the middle. Then there's a rewind symbol. You go back. There's a fast forward symbol. You go forward and you basically see the whole story. Apologies for the air quotes out of order. But even that's interesting because that kind of ties in with this film interest because that is quite a cinematic <laughs> style. I feel like write. you're sort of doing a psychologist yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I'm like, that is, that's how, that's, that's like memento or something, you know? Yeah. Like it's more, 
I don't know. I'm not familiar with that from novels, but I would be familiar with that style from yeah. um, from yeah. films. So there's something new. For maybe books. I'm very heavily influenced by movies, and maybe, I didn't realize it. There'll be a dinosaur in the next one for sure. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, Catherine. And um, that's all for this week's episode. And tune in next time to see whose bookshelves we'll be looking at. <laughs>